All right, welcome everyone. I first want to thank the uh, wonderful people from the Franklinton Board of Trade, the Franklinton Art District, and the uh, Columbus Greater Arts Council for joining us today. My name is Ian Buchanan. I am the Artistic Coordinator for the Coalition of Appalachian Lifestyles, that's COAL for short. And, I, and we're here today for a threefold purpose. First, to explain our mission as advocates for uh, Appalachian culture and lifestyle here in Columbus. Second, to uh, propose a free to enter two day long uh, cultural festival in the same vein as the Asian festival, the Greek festival, among many others here in Columbus. And third, to ask for your monetary support, for uh, your sponsorship to get the word out about, about this event, and for your help, guidance, and expertise in managing these many, uh, the many facets of putting this all together. And if you could press the slide for me. First off, I want to give you a little insight into our mission. We are five young professionals. Uh, most of us have uh, actual background and roots in the Appalachian community, and we feel very impassioned about how people portray Appalachians in modern society and its place in Appalachians as an, as an invisible minority among many other parts inside of the city of Columbus. I know that because of recent economic issues, um, a change in style of work, and a lack of cohesion that many other groups seem to already have, that the Appalachian community has fallen on some hard times. And rather than focus on the negative, we want to support what's good, what's wholesome, and especially the family values that I grew up around, and promote that to the entirety of the city uh, through the use of this festival. We have three primary goals through here. First, to build awareness for urban, ap urban Appalachian culture, which is obvious. We want to bring these many groups together, specifically from the Franklinton area, and to really get the city aware of who these people are, what they stand for, their story, and their particular history. Um, to eliminate Appalachian stereotypes, obviously, by having the rest of the community actively engage um, with, the, uh, with, uh, with this group from Franklinton, what they provide, and how they can uh, actually become a part of everything that goes on inside of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, of the city, and to uh, support Franklinton and cultivate it as a whole. And let's see, and we intend on doing this again by putting forth this two-day free-to-enter festival, and I, will allow, and I will now hand this off to Courtney, who will tell you more about the location, the place, and the event itself. Um, hi, I'm Courtney. I'm uh, the event coordinator. Um, when we first began to discuss um, what we wanted to do with this festival, we discussed where. And one of the places that we talked about was doing this actually in Franklinton to help boost the economy, um, the local economy within Franklinton. So we thought, what better place than Strongwater? Um, it's roughly just over 3,500 square feet um, within the uh, location itself. But then they do have an adjacent parking lot, which would provide ample space for vendors, food trucks, um, stages for um, music and entertainment. And then we also discussed um, what we wanted to do for food and beverages. So. We've talked to a variety of places within Franklinton, again, to help boost the, the local economy there. Um, one of the food trucks that, or one of the food locations that is in Franklinton is the Phillips Original Coney Island, which they have already um, talked about coming. Uh, they've committed to that. And then um, when it comes to beer sales, we have uh, Land Grant and Rehab Tavern, which have already um, donated or committed to donating beer to our festival. And in turn, we would take those sales and um, put them towards revenue. And if we are able to uh, make a profit, we would in turn um, turn this profit into, or uh, reinvest it back into the local economy. Um, so now I'll take it back to Ian to discuss more about um, the entertainment options at this festival. Now my pri primary job was to bring in local musical talent from, fr from the Franklinton and greater Columbus area. The music of Appalachia is imperative for people to have the sort of a holistic experience of what the culture has to bring, the uh, hardships they had to face during the migra migratory period, the greater history connecting back to uh, English folk tunes, uh, the African influence is very apparent inside the music, and the um, overall cultural feeling of how Appalachia operates. And to have, and it really is necessary to bring in musicians to not only entertain the crowd, but to have this sort of broad cultural um, movement and understanding. Unfortunately, that does come at a price, and it is uh, 
important for us to support these music musicians in the best way possible. They need to be paid well, not only to uh, for their services and their expertise, but also to ensure that we cultivate good relations amongst the different individuals that would be showing up here. Th uh, thankfully for us, there's both an indoor and an outdoor stage at Strong Waters, so two different sets could be going on throughout the entire time. We assumed around a six hour event for both days, so we could have 12 hours total of music in six different sets operating, simulta operating simultaneously. And with the um, money issue out of the way, music would flow freely, and so would the entertainment and the enjoyment of the people. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am the Education Advocacy Coordinator of COAL. Um, as Ian mentioned earlier, one of our goals is to cultivate Franklinton. And one of the ways that we intend to do this is by including vendors from the Franklinton area. So our vendor list will include vendors, from, uh, vendors and artists from Franklinton, including Under Aurora, Hammered and Corked, and approximately 20 artists from studios of the Ethical Arts Collective and 400 West Rich Street. And in addition, we will allow festival goers to uh, purchase artisan jewelry and clothing while also interacting directly with independent business owners. So we hope that this local aspect of the festival will ultimately promote economic growth within Franklinton. So back to the goal of cultivating Franklinton. We also want each festival attendee to leave the festival with a new knowledge of both the history and the future of Franklinton. So with the help of the Franklinton Historical Society, we intend to include several exhibits on the founding of Franklinton, as well as future development plans for the area. And we will also be offering several different workshops that have ties to both rural and urban Appalachia. And these will include things like beekeeping, urban gardening, uh, apple butter and ice cream making, and uh, things of that nature. And we, and finally, um, to cultivate Franklinton, we will also be offering Franklinton resource booths. And these will offer information on local organizations, including Franklinton Gardens, Gladden Community House, Mount Carmel's Healthy Living Center, and um, Lower Lights Ministries. And each of these organizations offers free services in a wide variety of different areas, um, and things like nutrition, food security, um, health care, child care. So we hope that through our festival, we can ultimately um, we can ultimately promote healthy living and facilitate healthy living in Franklinton. And now Alex is going to say a little bit more about physical activity in Franklinton. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex Umble, and I am the sports liaison. And uh, the reason for putting sports in this festival is I strongly believe that uh, sports brings people together. And um, in today's society, um, it's, it, it means a lot to be involved in sports, and it's something special. Um, sports are not only enjoyable as a fan, but also as uh, recre recreationally through um, amateur leagues. Uh, that uh, both Franklinton and, Col and Columbus provide. And we are lucky enough to have uh, four professional teams in Columbus, including the Columbus Crew, which is the soccer team, uh, the Columbus Clippers, the baseball team, Columbus Blue Jackets, the hockey team, and the Ohio Machine, which is the lacrosse team. And uh, the festival will have both vendors that will be describing the amateur leagues as well as the professional sports in Columbus relating to cost and weekly and monthly deals to save money. Um, not only will vendors be uh, talking about sports, we thought it would be fun to have some of the professional players in attendance to sign autographs for kids, as well as older people as well. And um, many games, such as how fast you can pitch a baseball, or uh, how good your accuracy is with a hockey stick, or 
cooking, kicking a soccer ball. So these are those would be some of the fun events. And um, one sport that is uh, relatively new in the area is lacrosse, and uh, is actually the gr fastest growing sport in the nation. And um, there's a huge push from the U U.S. Lacrosse Organization as well as the Ohio Machine to grow this sport, especially in low-income areas, and um, kind of eliminate the stereotype of lacrosse being a rich sport. Um, so every Wednesday night at the at Resolute in Columbus. Uh, players from the Ohio Machine will be putting on free clinics to help introduce the sport with free equipment for all ages. Um, in conclusion, this festival will provide information for all kinds of sports leagues as well as information about professional local teams. It will attract both women and men from all ages um, Sports is a fun activity that unites people and prov provide a healthy lifestyle and I would have and I would love to spread it to Franklinton. And now I would uh, pass the mic on to Cody. Uh, hello, my name is Cody Stanley. I'm the event logistics coordinator. And to start off on just some simple logistics on the event, our venue Strongwater like, as Courtney has previously stated, has plenty of space for the actual event, and they will cover not only just providing the venue for the event, but also will help us with the setup, the, maint the maintenance, and the teardown of the various different tents and stages and electronics equipment. They'll also provide the restrooms and first aid equipment and various other things of that sort. And for the weekend, that'll just cost us $3,000 to cover all of that. We'll also need an electric generator to cover the... Um, uh, food trucks and various other the outdoor stages for the lights and whatnot. We found a local hard, hardware store that will volunteer us a um, uh, generator we can rent for $900 for the weekend. We'll also be closing Lucas Street, which is right along the front of Strongwater for the weekend, which will require a permit of the cost of about $500. We'll also need a police detail with that street closure, which will cost about $800 for the weekend. And then, so far as the wood workshops, as uh, Sarah previously mentioned, they'll cost about th be about a thousand dollars of various expenses for the weekend, and also to cover the entertainment for all the different artists and performers, it'll be about ten thousand dollars for the weekend. And so far as revenue, it all really depends on how many people we can get to show up to the event. We're projecting between fifteen hundred and three thousand people, which is feasible, but we'll need a lot of help to get the word out for this event to be able to get these people to show up. Because most, well, pretty much all of our revenue is coming from beer sales for the tickets to get the beer for the attendees. We're selling those for $5 a ticket, and each attendee can purchase as many as they want, but we project about 1.5 tickets on average per attendee, which would give us revenues anywhere from about $5,600 to $11,200, depending on whether we get on the high, high range or low range of attendance. We also have some revenue from the vendor's fees, which is $75 a vendor. But we're only projecting 20 or so vendors to show up, which would be about five, which would be about $1,500. Which means we would be about $4,400 into the red if our projected attendance shows up. Which is why we would need your donations to help, this or to help this event become a yearly tradition and get it off the ground. So if we go into advertisement, this is where it comes in big, is being able to get people to come to our event and to, to attend our event. Because if we have nobody show up, we don't make any money at all for the event, and it's a, just a huge loss. So we plan on doing this because the Franklin New Franklinton News has already agreed to run an ad for our event. We also will have Facebook groups and a Facebook page for the event and a Twitter page. And we're going to advertise to the Columbus Dispatch, both digitally and in print. In print, it would cost about $250 to $300, depending on the size of the um, uh, ad we got. And we also plan on advertising digitally online through their website and some of their other websites in their network, which would be about 300-ish dollars. So we're thinking it would be probably anywhere between, actually between 300 and 500 dollars, depending on what we did with the dispatch. We are still in communication with them. So all in all, we just need to also need a Gladden, Gladden House's help with, when it comes to so far as I'm uh, getting the word out to people in the community, having local flyers and churches and schools just 
getting the word out to get people to come to this event, because without attendance to the event, we're not going to make any money for the event. So now I'll hand it off to Ian. All right, and just to surmise once again, um, we're Cole. We hope to advocate for the good that is within the Appalachian community. We want to put on this free festival for the benefit of all, for, for all, and to do our part to ensure the um, active engagement of the individuals from Franklinton too. Now, uh, through your, hopefully through your help, we can act, we can reach out to these people and ensure that they not only show up but act, want to set up shop with us to perform, to sell their goods, to really bring themselves up through, uh, through this process and to actively engage with the rest of the community. I know it would mean so much to them and to myself to see this sort of revitalization in the community and to see this travel from across the river into an area that has been in, eco in uh, poor economic straits for some time now. I want to thank you all again for coming out and I hope that you support our efforts. And I'll hand it over to Courtney to be the point man for our questions. Okay, um, I'd like to open the floor to any questions that you may have. I was wondering, I thought that was, is that, uh, what's, what's the name of the center you're at? Stronghold. Isn't there, isn't that becoming an artist community, a place for artists to operate with studios and that's That is, right? yeah, that's the Columbus Idea Foundry, which so is, it's, it's right, it's right behind it. Okay. Yeah. So there, so, okay, so I'm trying to envision this. There'll be um, kind of like it's music, a lot of music and various groups performing, maybe a sports component, uh, some kind of comp sports competition going on at some point. And um, did you say anything about, would there be like any visual arts, like quilting or anything represented? Or would that be a vendor type thing? Or would there be that aspect of Appalachian culture at this kind of an event? There is. Um, would you like to take this one? Yeah, um, there will be vendors um, selling their arts, but there will also be workshops. Um, one one workshop we know we want to do is weaving. So, but yeah, we're definitely open to more arts as well. So of your attendees, you said 1,500, uh, 3,000. How many of those do you think would actually buy a beer? You said you could sell maybe 1.5 tickets per beer drinking attendee or for all no. attendees? It, we we um, discussed maybe 50% would buy beer. And then of that 50%, they would buy 1.5 beers. That was just a rough estimate that we came up with. So, so if your beer sales are much lower than they will be what would you do with the remaining beer that doesn't get sold and also how would you underwrite, <laughs> how would you underwrite the expense um, well I mean part of what we're doing with volunteers is um, or a way to help promote volunteers to come is offering them uh, free beer tickets and uh, food but um, if we if we don't uh, I don't know do you want to take this one yeah sure Another thing that would become with the extra beer, um, uh, we would probably have to just return most of the extra like kegs and bottles that we have to like Land Grant and the other local breweries with that. We also might just do auctions for the kegs, like silent auctions, just to get, you know, help get rid of whatever is left over to the various members. We would you know, need to help the volunteers with that so far as getting IDs and make sure everyone's legal to participate to buy whatever is left over. Will, th will there be other things to drink? And if so, how much might those beverages cost? Um, the, uh, the beverages that aren't alcoholic would all be coming through strong water. Um, so it would be whatever their pricing is. All right. So I'm trying to think if I'm, if, if I'm a family mm -hmm. um, and the two of us want a beer and we have three children who are soft drinks, and I'm not sure how much those would be, but pretty easily I would be going through $20 right away. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about being able to afford that. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I, ge I guess as 
you know, someone who's being asked to support this, um, wondering if you've thought about the break-even point for a lot of the people who would attend, or are you trying to get a lot more suburban and more well-off people there? I mean, what, we're what trying, is your Well, we're trying projection? to get a, a good mix um, between Franklinton um, basically trying to unite Franklinton and then, you know, the surrounding um, urban areas of Columbus to bring them all to Franklinton. Um, and in terms of costs that would be associated to a family in Franklinton, um, the way we are hoping to, to get them to the festival is that um, promoting that any of the proceeds that we make, any of the profit, would be donated back into Franklinton itself. Um, whether that's through Gladden House or through the local economy in some way. Um, and so we, it would essentially be helping to benefit their community by spending money at this festival. So that is the way that we're hoping to get them to come out and enjoy the festivities. So do you see this festival as occurring annually like the other festivals that you mentioned? And if so, can you really plow all your profit back into Franklinton, or do you no. need to start a kitty? No, we definitely plan on setting some aside, but it obviously depends. Uh, you know, if we do make a profit after that first year, um, and we would we would love to continue this annually, but it kind of depends on the success of the first year, and you know the sponsorships and and any support that we can get from the community. Yes. So the beer is being donated? Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, it's a way for them to kind of bring um, awareness to their products, and, and that was how they were willing to, to donate it. And we are working on um, other local breweries as well. So. Um, I guess I have a question about, and maybe I just missed this earlier on, about what, maybe this picks up a little on, Richard's question, but what makes this sort of an Appalachian festival? Um, it's in Franklinton, mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah. Um, talk to me more about that. I guess I'm, I'm asking about the sports component, mm -hmm. but but some of the other, are, are the musical acts gonna be Appalachian acts? Is, is, yeah. are, the, are the vendors gonna be Appalachian vendors? I need to mm -hmm. wanna hear more about how it isn't just, uh, it's ComFest you know, three miles away. Yeah. No, a lot of the music will be bluegrass and country, so it'll go back to those roots of Appalachia, which is what we're trying to focus on. Um, and then, um, like Sarah uh, mentioned, the a lot some of the vendors or the workshops that we'll be doing are largely um, cultural um, things that Appalachians do, like beekeeping and um, farming and, and that kind of stuff. So that's how we um, attempt to incorporate the Appalachian culture. Okay. With this festival, I can add a point if I'd be interested. Sure. We're trying to widen the uh, base of appeal at this moment because we want to have uh, a reasonable amount of success of drawing people in for the first year. Once we have this sort of uh, project put in place, how it's set in place in the community, then we want to broaden our base out and ensure that people understand that the uh, things that we're trying to put on are Appalachian in style and it's just, it's just unfortunate that we have to well, wrote people in for the first time to make sure they understand who we are, what we stand for, and hopefully that this continues into the future to become a true Appalachian festival. Did I miss the information about when you plan to have the event and how you're coordinating the dates of this event so they wouldn't conflict with other distracting events that might be going on simultaneously? Yeah, we discussed um, potentially doing it in the fall. Um, but, you know, this obviously depends if we do get the sponsorships and we're able to make that happen. Have any of you contacted anyone involved with Urban Scrawl or uh, Independence Days, which are festivals I've been in Franklin Penn? They've been pretty uh, successful and they've tried to integrate the community. So have you talked to any of them to see how they've integrated the local community? Um, well, we've talked with Gail. Would you like to? Yeah. Um, we talked to Gail Gray, the same woman that they talked to, and she she gave us recommendations on who to contact and um, where to hold the event. Um, 
but yeah, we haven't talked to like urban scrawl coordinators or anyone like that. So, so a suggestion rather than a question. Uh, some of the locals do have a lower rate of literacy and also have less access to computers. So you might want to consider adding to the social media advertising strategy to include the people that don't have easy access to computers or might have print literacy issues. Did you have a question in the back? No? Okay. It kind of already got, okay. Is there any other questions? Okay, well thank you for your time. Okay.